Hi, and welcome to Scrambled. Today we have a musician on the show, a marvelous young man named Justin Colos, who will be singing and playing the ukulele for us. He's quite good, and I think you will enjoy him. We also discuss the hot movies that are in theaters right now, Man of Steel and The Purge. Yes, and we do. We have quite mixed opinions on these movies, however, so be prepared for a fiery debate. So, let's go and talk to Justin. We are joined here today by Justin Cullis, an on-the-rise musician studying at the Chico State Musical Program. Now, Justin, tell us, what are some of your uh, influences when it comes to music? Uh, well, I would say there are many, but if I had to choose a couple, it'd be the people that I base my music off of mainly. Um, people like Jason Mraz, uh, Jack Johnson. Bruno Mars inspires me just because he's actually a talented singer, and that's pretty rare nowadays. So, those type of people, yeah. Um, so I know that you're going to Chico State right now. Yes. Uh, how long did you know that you wanted to be a musician? Was it something that kind of was recent or? It, uh, no, definitely. I've known it for a long time mm -hmm. um, and I've been working at it. Eighth grade was probably when it, when it actually kicked in, but I've been playing a long time. So, so what, what do you play? What music uh, instruments do you play? Saxophone is probably my strongest technically. Mm -hmm. Technical instrument, whatever. Um, but I, piano and ukulele and now vocals is a newer thing. But I play, I dabble on the, the drums and the uh, guitar now. So you play a lot. I little play a lot. I'm, a, I'm trying to be a composer. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, okay. So what are you majoring in in college? Composition, music composition, ah. film scoring. Oh, film scoring. Yes. Well, it's quite an assortment. Uh, what's your favorite genre? Like, what would you. <sighs> that is a question that most people would answer. I don't have a favorite. I listen to everything, but I probably would like, I like alternative pop type stuff, just because that's what I'm most similar to, I would say, so. Any interest in Hawaiian music? I know you are uh, you quite know, an aficionado of the. Yeah, what with the ukulele, ukulele. and all. Uh, Hawaiian music is definitely a, a, a passion of mine, I would say. Yeah, big Is fan? Oh yeah. Mm, beautiful. It's exciting. Yes. Um, so, uh, are you currently recording with anybody, or? Yes, I uh, am signed to the label. Uh, it's called New Vintage Artists. Uh, it's, it's a studio down in Sebastopol, and I'm working on a new, like a single, I guess you would call it. That's really exciting. Um, it's called Life Is Good, and uh, yes. You're gonna give us a little. Give a little demo of that, I guess. Demo of yeah. that. So, how is the life of a uh, signed musician, signed young musician? Uh, basically, just. Party every day, girls. No, just kidding. It's basically just nothing. Okay. You, you actually have to do a lot of other stuff, and you don't. You find yourself not really getting as much time as you'd like with your passion. Is music. it giving you any sort of income, or are you hoping that will come with a release? Hopefully, that will be coming with the release. <laughs> income is coming from babysitting and such. We all start somewhere. Yes. Justin Bieber started with YouTube videos. That I've been working on that. In about three years, you might follow his path, you know? Okay, so you tried YouTube. Have you ever tried to audition for, like, The Voice or American it, Idol? It's funny you mentioned The Voice first because, actually, uh, I believe it was February, I auditioned for it down in L.A. Wow. And uh, it's pretty exciting. I wasn't actually scared at all just because I would, you know, go in there. It's kind of just... Give it your all, yeah. see what happens. Um, so, I got, yeah, I got to sing two songs uh, where most people got to sing one, so... It's exciting. It's cool. I'm going out next year. Who do you uh, sing for? Is it is a random person that I do not care about. All right. Oh, so not CeeLo? Not CeeLo Green. Real shame. Fired. Probably. We'll Most see. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's go and hear you play your Life is Good. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Because life is 
kitchen is so relaxed. Live how you want to, don't ever ask. And don't hold back. So many people live their lives a day at home. Great opportunities arise, but they gotta say no. How could a person live with all these do's and don'ts? It seems like words are just stuffed into their throats. A person's gotta stand up for what they believe in. They gotta follow their hearts and keep on dreaming. Cause dreams are true and they can from the very beginning. Just start doing what you want and you'll start seeing life is good. And life is sweet. And keep on living with the beat. Because life is chill. I look into the mirror, but it's so hard to tell It's so hard to tell what lies ahead of me Will I make myself a friend or find my enemies? Why can't other people just live in the moment And not turn their backs on something they're in love with? Sooner or later they're gonna regret it Unless they stop living life from a checklist Life is good and life is sweet Keep on living with the beat Because life is true so relax, live how you want to, don't ever ask, and don't hold back. Time ain't holding you back, time is only going your way. If someone tries to tell you how to live your life, Smile and start to say Life is good and life is sweet and Keep on living with the beat Because life is chill, it is so relaxed Live how you want to, don't ever ask And don't hold back All right, so that was a really cool song. I really liked that. Yes, I reckon in about three years you'll be hitting reporters and uh, throwing wild parties. Okay, so you, you wrote that song yourself. Yes. How do you go about writing a song? Uh, usually, hopefully I usually have inspiration, but, but um, yeah, I mean, like I, I write the chords first usually, and then mm -hmm. just kind of jam, and then, and then lyrics just come to me kind of. Oh. And it's, yeah. It's not too difficult, actually, if once you do it a lot, like yeah, like know. Taylor Swift. Like Taylor Swift, after you've had all those, after you've had all those relationship failures. So, so what do you so sing? What are your songs about? Do you have? Uh, most of them are love songs, but um, a lot of them aren't even about anyone. Some of them are, but uh, summertime, like happy things, uh, going for what you love, like life is good. Um, I don't know. Sad songs are always fun to write about. Um, fun. Huh. Fun. Well, it's good that you can pull inspiration from, I mean, I'm basing this off the one song we heard, Life is Good. Life good is that good. you can pull inspiration from happy things. I'm like, yes. I'm Taylor Swift to find solace in breakup songs. So. <laughs> it's true. You're beating her in that respect, Justin. Thank you. Thank so you. how long have you been writing songs for? I started writing songs with lyrics in my senior year. Of high school. Of high school, wow. So, okay. So not like a year. Mm -hmm. Almost two. And do you have a signature style you're going for? Uh, fedora, perhaps? Panama hat? Uh, and you, you read my mind. You read my future. Beautiful. Yes. And your stage name, do you have one? Uh, people have said Justin Love. That's good. Um, but I'm probably just going with Justin Colas or J. Cole, J. J. Swag, I don't know. J. Swag. I'd Whatever happens. Better trademark that one. Yes. Yes. So, what, do you have like a plan uh, a, like a, for where you're going to be going as a musician or do you kind of plan to have that on the side and then have your composing? I be? biggest dream would be to just be like, um, not like Justin Bieber, but what he's doing. So just like touring um, and performing. So more like a Jason like a Mraz living. or... Yeah. 
making money. I, I dig Jason Mraz, yeah. Yeah. And you'll treat the press nicely? Yeah, of course. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but if not, uh, that's why I'm going to school for composition. Mm -hmm. uh, just so I could try and do some I think film everyone scoring. should have a plan B. Yeah, and I'm probably going to need a plan C, maybe. You know, it's always good, so we'll see what happens. Just go through the alphabet. I mean, life happens. <laughs> I, yes, well said. Okay, so this next song that you're performing, do you want to give a little intro on that? How long yeah. has it existed? Let the Levees Break is, is the name of it. Um, it is definitely probably, I think it's my favorite song, uh, lyrically. Um, it was my eighth song. Adam, I have like over 50 now. So oh, it's, wow. it's one of my first ones. So I think it, it is lyrically uh, pleasing to me because I hadn't written that many songs back then, so I wasn't out of ideas for what to say. All right, well, yeah. <laughs> let's take a look to Let the Levees Break. This second song is called Let the Levees Break. Looking back, I can see we used to be invisible to me. I saw myself smiling then, but coming back to now. Like it's the end as I look into the storm. I wish that I could die and be reborn, but that's not real and that's not fair. I just gotta know that I can't be there, so let the rain come down, let the clouds roll in. Justin, I, I think Let the Levees Break is my favorite song. I really like that one. Thank you. Exceptional. Any uh, inspiration? Um, the cha I, I challenged myself with that song to not say the word you. So it was, not, it was supposed to be like a deeper. Well, that's tough in a love yeah, song. It was tough. Oh. Yeah, so. All right. Um, so where can we find your music? Good question. Um, I'm on YouTube. Uh, just type in Justin Colas. Uh, it should come up. 
I am on SoundCloud, also Justin Colas. Uh, and Facebook, you can like my page on there, Justin Colas. <laughs> I, think, I think I will be doing that. And hopefully soon you'll find it on iTunes and, and other places like that. Where you will get money. Yes. All right, well, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show yeah, today, Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. The one thing I love about the summer is the movies. There are amazing movies coming out right now. The world has ended in almost every possible way already, and it's just June. And you know what? It's going to keep ending with The Purge, uh, Man of Steel, I mean, World War Z. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. So, you know, start prepping your wallet because you are going to be inside a movie theater a lot this summer. Personally, I will pay eight fifty every day to see the world decimated in a different setting. All right, so let's start with Man of Steel. We both saw that movie. That's the first for the show. Uh, I hated it. It was probably one of the worst movies I have seen in a really long time. I was so disappointed because I love Superman and I was a big fan of Superman Returns, uh, the movie that came out in 2002, 2003. So, you know, I was anxiously waiting, but woefully disappointed. Okay, if you want to start the real review, uh, Man of Steel was actually very good, the best executed Superman in years. It's really the movie that made Superman fans proud to be Superman fans again. And first of all, they did not use Lex Luthor, which every other Superman movie uses. Well, that's because this is the first one out of like several. You know, they started at the beginning of the comic. Exactly, and it is at its core an origin story, which has never been fleshed out quite in the way that Man of Steel did this before. Mm -hmm. It had two great roles by Russell Crowe and Kevin Costner as the biological father and the adopted father of Superman. Just lots of great father-son. But there wasn't scenes. enough focus on those figures. I, I feel like they just kind of were pushed to the side when they really should have been main characters. But the screen time they did have was very profound and you really saw how Superman was shaped into a confused young boy with these extraordinary powers into the man that he is. Okay, I liked all of those actors. They all did a good job. It was the villain that I just could not stand. It ruined the whole movie for me. Dr. Zod? Uh, General Zod, General first Zod. of all, Nora. Thank you for... Anyways. That's how out of it I was during the movie. It, it was really It's because you're eating sushi. You can't eat sushi and watch a movie. That just does not mix. All right. So General Zod was just as powerful as Superman, which just kind of made Superman just not... They're both see. Kryptonians, Nora. But you couldn't see how powerful Superman was. That was what the first two-thirds of the movie because was Because... Yeah, but it wasn't enough. I need to see him saving people. I need to see him giving the kiss of life to someone. Because really, I did not see that with General Zod in the way, because he just it made Superman just look like this normal guy. That's well, you could probably tell that they were both extraordinary, given the fact that they destroyed a major city. Yeah, but what was with that? They like smashed New York. He like it would cost billions of dollars, and Is everyone that would be super pissed. Well, so the other alternative is that the world was turned into Krypton through Terraform. They would hate him, though. Like, he would just be this villain in the eyes of the people because he would just fly and smash into skyscrapers for no reason at all. Well, I mean, they addressed that. They said that the people would not accept him. Almost like the Batman story, when, they, when there's something they do not understand, they reject it. But that wasn't about him destroying buildings. Like, he could just go around them. But, but he what are they going to do to him? They can't kill him. Superman will be fine, trust me. I don't know. It, it, was, it was one of those movies where you're sitting in the theater, kind of looking at your watch, going, this is almost done, let's, let's wrap this thing up a little bit, so. Oh, another thing, actually. Glad that you mentioned the huge battles and the facing someone against him that is his strength. I'm so glad they did not bring kryptonite into this, because I am so sick. I was looking for the kryptonite, though. That I am sick of Superman's abilities being immediately diminished from a single rock. You didn't even get to see his abilities, though. A single though. Like, rock. Because he was sent to the spaceship where his powers were taken away. He couldn't breathe well. It's like For a little a boy short with asthma. Of time. I mean, it just very lost its time. magic. I was happy about the lack of kryptonite, though, because kryptonite has been used as a cop-out by Superman movies forever. Because the only time that Superman will be in danger is because of kryptonite. And the fact that he faced someone as strong as him was a real you know, breath of fresh air. And not having Lex Luthor. Horrible, I do not dirty like air. Lex Luthor. We'll see him later. Uh, there's definitely going to be a sequel. It was set up for one. Hopefully without 
General Zod in the story because he was, you know. Killed. Killed. I know. I knew that. Yes. That's right. Anyways. So, you saw another movie. I did. I, I saw The Purge. Now, The Purge, in case you don't know, it's a movie based on the premise that the U.S. government in the year 2002 has stated that for one night, once a year, all government officials, such as police, military, even hospitals, will be completely off duty and no crimes committed during that night will be investigated. So everything is legal. Murder, uh, you know, assault, robbery. And it is based around one family that actually sells these security systems, one of the, one of the, uh, the kind of upper class families. And going into this, it seems as if and they even hinted at this, that the purge was there to eliminate the lower class, the poor and the you know, non-contributing members of society. And that was how the econ economy in the US flourished at the time. And that was actually true. It did work better because of that. But it's also raising the question, is that right to do that, to eliminate the lower class just to help the American economy? And the movie did not address these issues. It hinted at the fact that they'd make a huge social change, but it ended up just being about the family trying to survive. So it set up these huge societal questions, but left them unanswered. Was it a horror film, or? It set itself up as one. It had tense moments, but it wasn't that scary, really. Mm -hmm. So it seemed as if it was going to be a societal statement, but it just wasn't. It was about the family trying to survive at the end. Okay. And it was really just unsatisfying in almost every way. And you did not like any of the characters. I didn't want them to survive at all. They were. They didn't develop as I thought they would. They didn't really make any changes. No one, it would have been better if the family was against the purge, but they were actually for the purge, so they didn't mind killing people. Oh. I thought they were gonna have to overcome that to be able to kill, but no. No, it was just, it was Kinda unsatisfying. Pointless. Yeah, it was just like a dry loaf of bread. Well, it seems like one of those movies that has, is a good idea, just doesn't quite reach the exciting level. But I like to try to envision what would Davis be like if there was a purge. Um, Ooh, that's rough. What's something you would see happening if there was a purge in Davis? Groups of teenagers, perhaps even Harper students, riding around on bicycles without helmets at night, past the 11 o'clock curfew. It would be rough, Nora. I'd be scared. Don't lock your doors, don't go outside, bar your windows. Bicycles stolen, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Skateboards ridden on downtown Davis sidewalks. Bad. What do we do? People just not using the bike paths. Actually, no, that's, that's already a reality. Someone throwing a soda can in a trash bin, not a recycling bin. Yeah, it's just nightmare. Yeah. So, if you're ready to experience a horror film that never quite made it to the level of being a horror film, I think The Purge may be that movie for you. But it isn't, so don't go and see it. Yeah. Don't go see any of the movies we just mentioned because none of them are good. I think you should save your money and wait for something better to come out. But do vote for an actual Davis Purge. All right. Thanks for joining us on our movie review. All right, thanks for tuning into Scramble today. I hope you really enjoyed that episode. It's quite a varied episode. Musicians, movies, summer plans. And let us know if you ever want to see anything on Scramble. You can contact us through the website, and we'll put what you want to see. Yes, the future's looking bright, really shaping out to be quite the baker's dozen. Have a great summer. Stay classy, America.